What's up guys, it's Tom here. Facebook's global coin. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it evil? Or is it somewhere in between? In this video, I'm going to be breaking down extensively what the Facebook project is and trying to offer a more unbiased opinion to discuss where there are some very big positives in terms of society with this project and also offer the potentially scary things that this project could introduce. A quick note on a giveaway. If you would like to receive or more accurately suffer a 30 minute video call with me, simply like the video and comment down below. I'll announce the winner at the end of the month. Facebook's global coin is a cryptocurrency backed by real world assets. Interestingly though, it isn't pegged to the price of a traditional currency. It's not pegged to the US dollar. It's not pegged to euros, pounds or anything else. Instead, it is backed by a basket of currencies along with some commodities, some securities and other investments intended to be as low volatility as possible. The coin will be supported by a network of exchanges globally allowing people to buy and sell tokens. It will also be integrated into Facebook's ecosystem. So Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, etc. And most likely more ecosystems as other companies join the network too. The idea is to encourage adoption and become a mainstream cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. But we'll get to that later. For now, let's just talk about the project's mission. In order to describe the mission, I'm going to read some quotes from the white paper and then offer my thoughts. Our hope is to create more access to better, cheaper and open financial services. No matter who you are, where you live, what you do or how much you have. This is the goal for Libra. A stable currency built on a secure and stable open source blockchain backed by a reserve of real world assets and governed by an independent association. An additional goal of the association is to develop and promote an open identity standard. We believe that decentralized and portable digital identity is a prerequisite to financial inclusion and competition. So on the surface, it sounds fantastic. It sounds like they want to create an open source project, which is going to allow financial inclusion worldwide. On top of that, I'm actually a big fan of the idea of having digital identity. I do believe that in the future digital economy, we can't realistically have any of that without having some sort of identity standard. Now, obviously, this is where concerns come in at the same time. Facebook can say that this is their intent. They can say that it is to help the world and say X, Y, Z. But we don't really know if that is the case. At the end of the day, if they are going to be moving into financial services, there are many reasons why people are skeptical of whether they're going to do this in an ethical way or not. We're going to discuss more on that later. But first, the practical elements. How will the project actually work? Initially, the Libra project is being pioneered and built by Facebook. However, their plan is to actually take a step back over time. In the long term, they want to have 100 nodes, 100 founding members, and they want to be only one of these members. So essentially, they would have 1% of the total voting rights on the network, and everything would be equally distributed between these 100 members. However, you're probably thinking, who are these other 99 members? According to the white paper, they want to sign up businesses, academic institutions and charities. So far, there are 28 members, the majority of them appearing to be businesses. This isn't surprising considering it costs $10 million to become one of the founding members. And I don't know how many charities or academic institutions are likely to be able to afford to stump up this kind of money. Next, we'll talk about whether the project is going to be decentralized or centralized. This is actually more of an interesting conversation than you may expect. It's the Facebook global coin. It has 100 members and they have equal voting rights. They have to buy in with $10 million to be part of this network. Of course it is a centralized network, right? Well, this is where it actually gets a bit more interesting. I'm gonna read out a few quotes in the white paper and then I'm gonna offer my thoughts on whether I think this is true or maybe it's just BS. But first, the quotes. The association will develop a path towards permissionless governance and consensus on the Libra network. Permissionless governance. So that isn't having 100 members and allowing no one else to join the network. The association's objective will be to start this transition within five years and in doing so gradually reduce the reliance on the founding members. Permissionless systems have low barriers to entry and innovation. 
are resistance to censorship attacks and encourage healthy competition among infrastructure providers as well as the developers of applications on top of the network. Our ambition is for the Libra project to become permissionless. The challenge is that as of today, we do not believe that there is a proven solution that can deliver the scale, scalability and security needed to support billions of people and transactions across the globe through a permissionless network. Now that is a pretty interesting development. We're talking about a project that has 100 nodes to begin with and you have to pay $10 million plus be a pretty sizable company to even be considered in the first place. It's pretty much as permissioned and closed as you can get in cryptocurrency. But they're describing how they actually believe permissionless networks are better in many ways and they plan to create this transition over time. For me, this creates two really opposing thoughts. The first is that when it comes to decentralization, my opinion has always been that it is an end goal. It's not a starting point. It's not realistic to go from a truly centralized world to a fully decentralized world in one step. Most projects that try to say they're gonna do this, I think it's BS. I don't believe it's gonna happen. The best projects tend to realize this. Beginning in a somewhat centralized fashion, and becoming more and more decentralized over time. So I understand where Facebook are coming from. If this is legitimate, then it would actually make sense. And then there's the other side of me, which is very skeptical. Imagine for a second that you're launching a truly permissioned closed blockchain and the community of people currently in cryptocurrency are incredibly against this. The easiest thing to do would be to say, look, we're centralized to begin with, but we're gonna be decentralized over time. Just give us some time and we can see how it plays out. Ultimately, this could be complete nonsense to appease people like you and me, as we believe in this industry that decentralization has a powerful use case within the world and the Libra project are doing the opposite. It is interesting that they are using this rhetoric, but ultimately I won't believe it until I have seen some sort of evidence. Now let's talk about the Libra investment token, the security attached with the project that many people appear to be overlooking. The Libra investment token is an additional security associated with this project, which appears to have been overlooked by many. Members pay $10 million in order to receive this Libra investment token. And it is from my understanding that they then have the choice if they would like to run a node or not. If they do want to run a node, then they have voting power within the network. If they don't, they lose this voting power. What is the purpose of the token? Remember when I said earlier that the project isn't just being backed by one currency. Instead, it's going to be a basket of currencies along with other real world assets. Well, many of these assets are going to be producing interest. And essentially, if you hold the Libra investment token, you are entitled once costs have been paid for to whatever remains from this interest. Bearing in mind that this could be a gigantic network with Facebook's reach and the other companies involved too, the interest received by some of these companies could be ridiculously large. Even more interestingly though, is that we've seen Facebook understand the power of blockchain. And they believe that putting a currency on a blockchain is a very, very powerful use case. That's exactly what the project is all about. Well, what about putting a security on a blockchain? That is essentially all a security token is. While I haven't read any confirmation within the white paper that they will be issuing a security token, I've certainly heard many people reporting on it, but I haven't actually read that specific wording in the white paper. It certainly isn't a far-fetched concept. In fact, I expect that this is going to be probably announced further down the line, bearing in mind everything they are doing with blockchain at the moment, and this could well be the world's most popular security token that could generate true interest within the market. It's one we'll have to wait and see play out, but I am extremely positive when I run the potential scenarios through my head. Let's finish this discussion by asking the question, is the Libra project good or bad for society? And is it good or bad for cryptocurrency? The first thing to acknowledge is that this is nothing like Bitcoin. It is nothing similar whatsoever. Bitcoin is an entirely escape from the traditional system. Facebook coin is essentially replicating the traditional system, but using blockchain to do so. 
Now, just because it is using blockchain, it doesn't mean it's similar to Bitcoin in any way. What we tend to find is when industries are new, people group everything together into one large basket. If it uses blockchain, then hey, it's got to be similar. That's kind of like saying Netflix and Twitter are similar because they both use the internet and they end in .com. In fact, if you went back 20 years ago, people would have said just that. The truth is they are entirely different businesses, completely unrelated to each other, just using a piece of technology called the internet. Bitcoin is a currency using a piece of technology called the blockchain, and the Libra project is another currency using a piece of technology called the blockchain. So I understand why people are thinking they are very similar in some ways. The truth is what makes Bitcoin Bitcoin is the fact that it is decentralized and permissionless. That is it. That is the key aspects to it. Forget the piece of technology that it's built on and forget the fact that it is a currency. Those are not meaningful overlaps. So instead, the Facebook coin is really a threat to traditional banking. And this is where it gets very, very interesting because they are fighting some of the largest global systems that are going to push back in every way they possibly can. Let's talk about the price movements in the short term and the long term. The first thing to say is very interestingly, Facebook have called this a cryptocurrency. Now I found that fascinating because I assumed that when this project was going to be announced, they would try to separate themselves from that term because the word cryptocurrency is still quite a dirty word in society. I mean, we know in this industry that things people think about it are completely false, but outside of this industry, it is quite a dirty word. And yet Facebook have called their project a cryptocurrency. Now you can say it is, or you can say it's not. That is a very fair debate. But in terms of price, I believe this brings a level of acceptance and understanding to the word cryptocurrency. People will see this project and they'll say, well, this doesn't sound negative. This doesn't sound like drug dealing. And yet it is a cryptocurrency. So maybe there is more interesting things here and this isn't such a dirty word. We are already seeing the short term price movements are being very bullish as a result. On the long term, I'm actually going to go ahead and make a crazy prediction, which of course in cryptocurrency is usually a terrible idea because it often goes wrong. But I kind of see the 2020 launch playing out something similar to the 2017 launch of Bitcoin futures. In the lead up to it, we saw a massive spike in price with everyone saying the institutions are now finally going to get involved. And this is going to be what sends us to the next wave, the next level. Well, the truth is we'd had a ridiculous bull run. And actually, institutions came in and began shorting the market. It caused the exact opposite. The classic buy the rumor, sell the news. I kind of think the market's going to play out in the same way. I think we're going to see a significant bull run up until the launch of this coin. And then we could well see a huge dip as a result. It's a crazy prediction. I might be entirely wrong, but I think this is going to be very bullish for crypto in the lead up to it. And then we may see a crash which coincides at a similar time to the launch. Is this project good or bad for society? Well, that question really depends on who you ask. I'm personally fortunate enough to live in a country where, yeah, we might not have the greatest banking system, but we do have democracy. So most likely it will be a case of improving the functionality and making it easier for people to send transactions, but it's not likely to change society much. However, if you go to some countries worldwide, they are heavily restricted by their governments. Is this going to be a perfect solution? No. A decentralized solution would of course be better, but that's not really the question. The question is, is it better than the current system that these people have? If the answer is yes, then ultimately this could be a good thing for their societies. And I believe there are many countries worldwide where yes, this actually could be a better system than the systems that they currently live in. While there might only be a hundred companies, academic institutions and charities making decisions on the network, there are many countries where I would trust that over one single government having complete say. Now, unfortunately, it could well be the case that these countries ultimately decide to ban all forms of cryptocurrency, including this project, so sadly, the countries that probably need this the most may be the ones that end up 
never getting to see its use. I've tried to approach my analysis with an impartial perspective. Personally, I don't like Facebook. I don't use the platform, and I think they've done many, many scummy things in the past as a company. However, I tried to approach this saying, look, forget that biases and just think of what are the good things and what are the bad things. So I've tried to highlight some positives that I do genuinely think this project could have for some societies globally. But at the same time, there are still some major concerns. The biggest one surrounds data. So Facebook won't have any access to the data as they have set up a subsidiary that will handle all of these processes. Facebook won't have any access to the data. Now they've done some very immoral things on the past, sometimes bordering on and even crossing the boundary of what is legal and what is illegal. So the naive side of me wants to believe that this is true, while the other side of me doesn't really believe it. The other aspect is law enforcement. They basically said they're going to be regulatory compliant and working with the law. Now this means potentially giving more data to law enforcement than they currently have on regular people. You could see this as a good thing in many ways. Yes, I'm sure it will be. But also there is a dark side to this too. When we talk about blockchain, we generally focus on all of the positives. The fact that this could be incredibly financially inclusive and the ability to have complete visibility across many different processes. Well, this can also be applied in a very, very negative way as well. With a simple click of a button, they could shut down all of your accounts related to your money. You may have coins locked up there, and hey, some people may even use this as a bank. Like that, they could shut it down. That is the thing, blockchain is just a tool. It's just a piece of technology. It can be used for good, and it can also be used for bad. So I kind of find it scary when law enforcement could have some of this data and ultimately enforce that companies shut down people's accounts because they've been doing things which the law decides isn't okay. That could be good and that could very well be bad. If law enforcement can shut down people's accounts more easily because of blockchain, people will also search for an alternative. And that is what Bitcoin is. It is a truly decentralized permissionless network that cannot be shut down by any government or law enforcement agency. That's why I say there's such a difference between this project and Bitcoin. They are at complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Let me know in the comments section what you think. You can focus on the societal impact or even just talk about the price. Let me know your thoughts down below as I'm fascinated to hear what the community thinks about this. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and also click that notification bell. Otherwise, YouTube doesn't let you know when a new video is out. So what's really the point of subscribing? <laughs>